Uh huh. All ye heathen. And you see, there ain't nobody over there messing with North Korea, neither are they. You got Iran, a little small country, jumping up, bucking up to the United States. Let the weak say that I am strong. All these little small countries now, everybody want to get their little nuclear arms and stuff, don't they? Go ahead and read, though. Back at 11. Uh-huh. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Uh-huh. And gather yourselves together round about. Go ahead. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Uh-huh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Go ahead. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. See, he going to judge all the heathen round about. <coughs> he going to put them, bring them all together, bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and judge them. And show them, look, I am the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, fight against each other. Then he going to slap everybody and say, look, I'm the one. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Put ye in the sickle. Uh-huh. For the harvest is ripe. Go ahead. Come. Get ye down, for the press is full. Didn't we read about he had that blood on his garment? The press is full. This is dead bodies that we're dealing with right here. Go ahead and read. For the press is full, uh -huh. the fats overflow. For the wickedness is great. Uh huh. For their wickedness is great, the multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision. Go ahead. For the day of the Lord is near in the it valley of near decision. It is near in the valley of decision. It is near. Now you're going to put a time on it. Go ahead and read. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Uh-huh. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. I mean, this ain't going to happen for one time in man's history. He said, the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars will withdraw their shining. Go ahead and read. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Uh-huh. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. Go ahead. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. Uh-huh. And the strength of the children of Israel. See, he ain't forgot about his people. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's why we're here, because we know the Lord. He's coming back to save us. Indeed. But we know that he got to take down the nations in order to do it. Let's go to Zephaniah, the first chapter. Zephaniah, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Zephaniah, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to get to the trumpets. Everybody just hold on to your seats. <laughs> Zephaniah 1 and 14. Zephaniah 1 and 14. Go ahead and read that. The great day of the Lord is near. Uh-huh. It is near. And hasteth greatly. Uh-huh. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Ooh, you see that? The mighty man, the earth, the, the, the ones that call themselves the superpowers, they're going to be crying bitterly at this time. He'll be crying bitterly. Go ahead and read. 15. Uh-huh. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, uh -huh. a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, uh -huh. a day of the trumpet. A and day alarm. of the trumpets. Uh-huh. An alarm against the fenced city. Go ahead. And against the high tower. See, it's going to be a day of trumpet. What will it be a day of trumpet? We're going to show you. Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. And I will bring distress upon men. Uh-huh. And they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Uh-huh. And their blood shall be poured out as dust. Woo. And their flesh as the dung. Man, this is going to be a terrible time. It's getting worse and worse, ain't it? Teach. We working our way on to them trumpets. Go ahead and read. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. Uh-huh. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Go ahead. For he shall make even a speedy writ riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So we're working our way on to the trumpet. Now the Lord get ready to come and pour his wrath out on this earth now. But we gotta do but he gotta do something first though. He got to do something. Let's go to Revelation 7 and 1. Revelation 7 and 1. Revelation 7 and 1.
When you get it, go ahead and read it. And after the, these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Uh-huh. Holding the four winds of the earth. See, you know, because man ain't going to do nothing that God don't allow him to do. Yes. That's why the world hasn't been destroyed yet. That's, right. That's why we haven't had no nuclear wars where the whole earth is in trouble. Because Lord holding back the four winds yes. of the earth. Yes, sir. He's yes, sir. controlling this. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. <clears throat> back at seven. Uh-huh. Back at one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Uh-huh. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Having the seal of the living God. Uh -huh. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Uh -huh. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, uh -huh. nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. See, he got to seal his servants first before he comes and do his destruction. He got to seal his servants first. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh huh. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now this is just some of the Israelites that he's going to seal that's close by him, but it's going to be other Israelites that's going to be sealed. Come on. There's going to be other Israelites and other people that's going to be sealed too. But now, so now, so the Lord's going to seal his servants first before he comes to do his destruction. Now let's go to Revelation, the 8th chapter. Revelation, let's go right on over to Revelation, the 8th chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 8 and 1. Here we go. Come on. And when he had opened the seventh seal, uh -huh. there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Uh -huh. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. And seven angels were given seven trumpets. Go ahead and read. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there were given unto him much incense. Uh huh. That he should offer it with the prayer of all saints upon the golden altar. Skip down to verse 6. Go ahead. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So we're going to stop right there because I'm going to show you that this is not the first time that the Lord has seven trumpets blown. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Joshua. We're going to come back here in a few minutes. Let's go to Joshua, the sixth chapter. Joshua, the sixth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Joshua 6 and 1. Because this is not the first time that the Lord had seven trumpets blown. Joshua 6 and 1. Joshua 6 and 1. This is the battle at Jericho. Joshua 6 and 1. Go ahead and read it. <clears throat> now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Uh huh. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hands Jericho. And the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Uh-huh. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Thus shalt thou do six days. Go ahead. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets there go of those seven trumpets right there. There go those seven trumpets. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. Uh, that, that seven is real significant with the Lord, isn't it? Make it plain. That's the number of completion. But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a loud blast uh -huh. with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Uh -huh. And the wall of the city shall fall down and flat. When, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat on the seventh day when you blow those trumpets. Hallelujah. And that's what's going to happen to this earth. It's going to be taken down at that seventh trumpet. We're going to get to it, but go ahead and read. Yes. See, people think we're 
crazy for keeping the memorial blowing of the trumpet. But this is lead to the coming of the Lord, ain't it? Come on, brother. Please. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Uh-huh. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets uh -huh. and ram horns before the ark of the Lord. Skip down to verse 10. Go ahead. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Uh -huh. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. Go ahead and read. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Uh-huh. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets and of ram horns. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram horns. Go ahead. Before the ark of the Lord went, went on continually. Uh-huh. And blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the re re the re reward came after the ark of the Lord. Uh -huh. The priest going on and the blowing with the trumpets. Go ahead. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. Uh -huh. And compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on, the, only on that day, they could pass the city seven times. Now this on the seventh day. They could pass the city seven times. What happened? Go ahead. Sixteen. Uh-huh. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpet, uh -huh. Joshua said unto the people, Shout! Uh-huh. For the Lord hath given you the city. Shout! For the Lord hath given you the city. And that's what's going to happen when the Lord returns. Because he said he's going to subdue all the nations under our feet, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like Joshua, when that seven, when those seven trumpets was blown, he said, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Let's go now. Let's go to Revelation 16 chapter. Because, uh, you know, when those seven angels that was given the seven trumpets, uh, when they sound these seven trumpets, the Lord is going to have seven vials of wrath poured out simultaneously. We're not going to get off into the wrath, but I'm just going to show you that the Lord is going to have seven wraths poured out too. So we're going to Revelation 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelation, we're going to read one verse. Revelation 16 and 1. When you get it, go ahead and read it. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying uh -huh. to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath uh -huh. of God upon the earth. Now he said, he said to the seven angels, go your way and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. So just like when the seven angels blow those seven trumpets, simultaneously the Lord is going to pour out his wrath on the seven angels going to pour out the wrath of God on this earth. Yes, sir. Now this, you know, look how deep this is. I'm not saying it's deep because I'm doing it. I'm just saying, look how deep the word of God is. Is that plain, brother? Let's go back to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation the eighth chapter. Revelation the eighth chapter. This thing is big, ain't it? Way bigger than what we've been taught. Way bigger. I, I don't want to I don't want to talk about nobody or nothing like that, but man, this is way bigger than what we was taught when we were going to those churches. When you was in Islam, when you were in uh, uh, Judaism, Buddha, and all that stuff, this is way bigger. We have Revelation 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6 now, because we're going to deal with these, some of these trumpets. Revelation 8 and 6. Go ahead and read it. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Uh-huh. The first angel sounded, and there followed, there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. Go ahead. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Uh-huh. Now look at what the Lord doing now. He got these angels now, which had those seven trumpets. They blowing these seven trumpets, and look at what's happening. So the first angel sounded, followed hell and fire mingled with blood. Go ahead and read. 
And the second angel sounded. Uh-huh. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Go ahead. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the sea was no. This sounds familiar, don't it? You go back to Exodus when the Lord was pouring out those plagues in the times of uh, Egypt. This sounds like the same plagues, don't it? Keep reading. Verse 9. Uh-huh. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. Uh-huh. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, uh -huh. burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Uh -huh. And the name of, of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Uh-huh. Look at, look, at look at all the carnage that's going to be going on at this time. And this is the Lord doing this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the Lord pouring out all this wrath on this earth like this. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> Twelve. Uh-huh. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. Uh-huh. And the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day sh shone, not for a third part of it, uh -huh. and the night likewise. Go ahead. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh-huh. To the inhabitants of the earth. To the inhabitants of the earth, uh-huh. By reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So now we at the fourth trumpet now, right? And look at all this destruction that the Lord is bringing upon the earth. Let's go now. Let's go to the next trumpet. Let's go to five. Let's go to Revelation 9 and 1. Revelation 9 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And the fifth angel sounded. Uh-huh. And I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Go ahead. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose smoke out of the pit. Now this is, this is Rome right here coming out of this pit. You know, go ahead and read. As the smoke of a great furnace. Uh-huh. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Go ahead. Now this is not talking about literal smoke. This, these are men. Represented, this smoke is representing men. Teach. Go ahead. Uh, 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 warriors. Go ahead and read. And there came out of the smoke locusts uh -huh. upon the earth. Now this is war equipment that we get ready to deal with now. John didn't know what he was looking at, so he just likened it, this war equipment to what he knew in the creation. So he said, locusts come upon the earth. Go ahead. And unto them was given power, uh -huh. as the scorpions of the earth have power. Go ahead. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Oh, you see that? Only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. See, you want to be on the right side sure enough. at the coming of the Lord. You want to be on this side now, show up, don't you? Go ahead and read. Five. Uh-huh. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. Uh-huh. But that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. Go ahead. When he striketh a man. See, then, then we're looking at war equipment right here. Because he's going to get down into it a little bit. Go ahead and read. And in those days shall men seek death uh -huh. and shall not find it. Man, that's some suffering there, ain't it? Come on, brother. It's going to be so bad. Men going to be just like, kill me. But they're not going to find it. They're not going to find death, though. That is really something. The Lord going to make you sit here and watch this and suffer. It's written. That's why you want to be on the side of the Lord. I mean, our church should be full tonight on the feast of a memorial of blowing of the trumpet, should it? Mm. All the churches should be full tonight. Come on, brother. Yeah. Come on. Go ahead and read, though. And in those days shall men seek death, uh -huh. and shall not find it. Go ahead. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Uh -huh. And the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared unto war. Go ahead. See, they're looking and at, they're battle, looking at war me. equipment now. Ultra terrain vehicles and stuff like that. Yes, but he don't know what to call them because uh, he don't know what he's looking at. 
So he just likened it to something that he understands or knows in the creation. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? The middle of seven. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Back at the top, seven. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. Uh-huh. And their faces were as the faces of men. Go ahead. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses. Now he said battle. the sound of their wings, that's helicopters and stuff. You see what John looking at? Oh, this is almost 2,000 years ago and the Lord showing them this. Imagine that. Go ahead and read. Ten. Uh-huh. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tail. Uh huh. And their power. Then he go to rocket the missiles coming out of these uh, uh, out of these helicopters and, and these planes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at what the Lord is showing them. Can you imagine that though? <laughs> <laughs> He's seeing this almost two thousand years ago. Come on, brother. Go ahead and read. And there were stings in their tails, and their power was at, was to hurt men five months. Uh huh. And they had a king over them, which is. The angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Ab Abaddon. Abaddon uh -huh. me, but in the Greek tongue, have his name Apollyon. Keep reading. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Uh oh, it's getting ready to get worse now. Go ahead and read. And the sixth angel sounded. And the sixth angel sounded. We got one more after this one, don't we? Go ahead and read. And I heard a voice. From the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, uh -huh. saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great rivers, Euphrates. Uh oh, now he said, loose those four. Remember, he first he said, hold back the four winds, right? Come now on. he said, loose those four angels, which are bound in the great river, Euphrates. Go ahead and read. And the four angels was loose, uh -huh. which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month. And a year. Go ahead. For to slay the third part for of men. For to slay the third part of men. You talking about billions of people gonna be slain. Go ahead and read. Sixteen. Uh-huh. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. Uh-huh. And I heard the number of them. Now look here, two hundred million soldiers <clears throat> coming through the great river Euphrates. Can you imagine this? The world has not seen the likes of this. But it's coming. That's Russia and all her allies. You know, China got a billion people, don't they? Sure no. They got some, because Russia can't do this by itself. So he got to get his, he got to get some allies, right? 200 million soldiers. Who going to be able to stop them? But God. Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, uh -huh. having breastplates of, of fire, and of Jason, Go ahead. and brimstone. And, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Go ahead. By these three was the third part of men killed uh -huh. by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. Now, so John looking at this war here, isn't he? And he also looking at the Lord pouring out his wrath too. He had these angels blowing these seven trumpets or these six trumpets so far. And then these eight, and then they pouring out their wrath on this earth. Now, before, let, let's go now, let's go, let's go to the seventh trumpet. Let's go to Revelation 11. Let's go on to that seventh trumpet. Revelation 11, and we're going to pick a lot of things going to happen at this seventh trumpet. Revelation 11 and 15. Revelation 11 and 15. Go ahead and read. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, uh -huh. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Now, I told you, I told you he had to come and take it over, didn't I? He had to subdue this man. First he got this man to fight against each other. Then he pulled out his wrath. Now he brought, had that seven angels sounded the seventh trumpet, right? 
And there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Not you born to heaven. Come on. He's going to take over the earth and come right on the earth. Not you going to heaven. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Uh-huh. And he shall reign forever and ever. Go ahead. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Go ahead. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Uh-huh. And the nations were angry, and, and thy wrath is come. The nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Go ahead and read. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Now, and look, that here, they now, should. now look at what happened after the seventh trumpet. After the seventh trumpet, he said, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> in the time of the dead. Now, because you know, people trip out when we talk about these trumpets. You understand? Well, look at what's going to happen at this seventh trumpet right here. The dead are going to be judged. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the time of the dead it, that they should be judged. Uh huh. And that thou should have give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Now, wait a minute now. If the, the prophets, the, the, the servants, not going to get their reward to the seventh trumpet, then where are the servants and the prophets at right now? So <laughs> if they was in heaven already, they got their reward, don't they? Plain. So where are they right now? They still in the grave. And they're going to be there until the Lord blow this seventh trumpet. That's right, brother. Keep Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, And they that should have given reward unto thy service, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, uh -huh. small and great. Go ahead. And should have destroyed them which destroy the earth. Go ahead. Read verse 19. What does it say? And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Uh -huh. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. Go ahead. And there were lightnings and voices and thunders uh -huh. and an earthquake. Because why? And a great hail. Because now we could read what we're going to read. The Lord is getting ready to come down now. He's getting ready to come down. But let's show you what's going to happen, though. Let's show you what's going to happen. Because he said that he's going to give a uh, 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 reward to his servants and prophets, right? Let's go now. At that seventh trumpet, let's go look at it again. Let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15. This is really something when you sit down and really listen to this, ain't it? God got a plan, man. Sure enough. And you want to be a part of that plan. We. Yes, sir. Yes, First sir. Thessalonians 4 and 15. First Thessalonians 4 and 15. Go ahead and read it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord uh -huh. shall not prevent them which are asleep. See, because that's what people are that's dead. They sleep right now. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Hold it now. He said, for the Lord shall descend with a shout. Uh-huh. With the voice of our angel. Uh-huh. And with the trump of God. And with the trump of God. That's that seventh trumpet right there. What's going to happen? Go ahead. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the first. dead in Christ going to rise first. Uh-huh. <laughs> then we... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them See, in the clouds. everybody ain't going to die. Everybody's not going to die. Because he said, uh, the, uh, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, but we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not be with them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Read verse 17 again. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in 
in the air. Oh, you gonna be That's... caught up. You gonna be caught up in the heaven to meet the Lord in the air. Did he say that? No, sir. It said we should be caught up to together with them, the dead in Christ, and we which alive and remain, because the Lord gonna descend, right? And the saints gonna ascend and meet the Lord where? In the clouds and in the air. Not in heaven. Go ahead and read. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, we're going to go back to Leviticus, the 21st chapter, 25th chapter, and we're going to show you what day this seventh trumpet is going to be blown on. Leviticus 25 and 8. Leviticus 25 and 8. We got two more. Leviticus 25 and 8. <clears throat> because this is our next feast coming up, too. Leviticus 25 and 8. Go ahead and read it. And thou shalt never seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Uh-huh. Seven times seven years. Uh, what's seven times seven years? That's 49 yeah. years, ain't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee. Forty and nine years. Uh huh. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. And what's that? That's the day of atonement. He said, Thou shalt cause the trumpet of jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Go ahead. In the day of atonement. In the day of atonement, because that's when the Lord's going to return in the jubilee year, but he's going to have the trumpet blown on the, uh, uh, on the day of atonement. That seventh trumpet. Go ahead and read. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Uh-huh. And ye shall hollow the 50th year. And you shall hollow the 50th year. Go ahead. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land. And to proclaim all the, liberty to throughout all the land. Go ahead. Unto all the inhabitants thereof. Uh-huh. It shall be a jubilee unto you. It shall be a jubilee. Because we read earlier, every man will return to his own possession then. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And ye shall return every man into his, his possession uh -huh. and ye shall return every man into his family. Go ahead. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. Uh -huh. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, uh -huh. nor gather the grapes in it Go ahead. of thy vine undressed. <clears throat> for, it is, for it is the jubilee uh -huh. and it shall be holy unto you. Go ahead. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. That's why we keep the Sabbath, see? Because we know that that Sabbath day that is to come. Yes, sir. You understand? For a thousand years, it's going to be holy, isn't it? Indeed. Go ahead and read. Oh. Verse 13. 13. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. In the year of jubilee, because this is when the Lord is going to return. In the year of jubilee. He's going to return every man to his possession. Because we read that earlier, didn't we? Every man, because we could have read it again when it said every man going to flee to his own country. Let's go Isaiah, the 61st chapter. We got one more. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. God got a big plan going on here for his people. And it's up to us to do this. It's up to us to do this. And I'm glad to see everybody come out for the uh, Memorial Feast of the Tabernacle. I'm sorry, uh, Lord sorry. of the Trumpet. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. hope to see you for the Tabernacle. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. Go ahead and read it. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me uh -huh. because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Go ahead. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives, uh-huh. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Uh-huh. To proclaim the acceptable year of the to Lord. A, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and what? And the day of vengeance of our God. And the day of vengeance of our God. He's going to proclaim liberty as he takes vengeance on uh, this man. You finished that? To, a, to comfort all that mourn. Now this is going to be last. We're going to Psalm 81 and 1. Psalm 81 and 1. Psalm 81 and 1. 
Go ahead and read it. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Uh huh. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the sultry. Go ahead. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, uh huh. In the time appointed on our solemn feast in day. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. And that's what this is a solemn feast day. First four. For this was a statue for Israel. And the law of God of Jacob. Now, so he said, but this was a statue for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. And that's why we are here tonight. Because we are keeping the law of the God of Jacob. So I thank everybody for coming out. And I thank those for uh, tuning in on the internet. Thank you. Yeah. And now we will have a reading of the announcements. <laughs> Thank you, brother, for expounding on that wonderful high feast, high night lesson. Okay. Um, <clears throat> grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel's Church of the Living God. If this is your first visit. We hope you come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. There's no eating or drinking in the sanctuary with the exception for water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers. Please remove any head covering upon entering the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, fleece jogging pants, shorts, tight fitting pants, or any other revealing attire. Sisters, you must have a head cover. This is required. Hat, scarf, etc. Do not wear shorts, skorts, midriffs, or see through blouses, mini dresses, mini skirts, halter tops of any kind, revealing splints, tight fitting, or cleavage revealing attire, modest apparel only. We have Bibles and scarves available for visitors. If you use a Bible scarf that belongs to Israel's Church of the Living God, please return it prior to leaving. If you live in the Lake County, Illinois area, please watch our television program, The Word for Life, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Comcast Channel 17. You can visit our Facebook page, Israel's Church of the Living God, to post questions or comments. All questions will be answered according to the Bible. Click the Facebook like button to see our daily posts, and also click the follow button to receive class information. Church activities and updates are in the news feed. In an effort to expand the church ministry, we have started a building fund. You can make your secure payments online using our PayPal account at www.israelschurchoftlg.org. Or you can send your donation to the attention of ICO, TLG, at P.O. Box 8933, Waukegan, Illinois, 60079. We thank you for your past contributions and hope for your continued support. Free will donations are welcome and appreciated. Finally, finally, brothers and sisters, please, please continue to pray for one another. This is this High Sabbath uh, Day announcement. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to contact us here at Israel's Church of Living God, you can give us a call at 847-636-4792. That's 847-636-4792. We also would like for you to follow us on our website. That's Israel's Church of TLG.org. Israel's Church of TLG.org. You can go on there and follow us on Facebook and um, look at some of our previous lessons on YouTube. We also have set up a GoFundMe account that if you'd like to make a donation for our building fund, you can uh, go on there and make a donation. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for coming out for tonight's service, Memorial Blowing of the Trumpets. And this service will be ending tomorrow evening at sundown. Uh, we'll be holding the Day of Atonement Tuesday, September the 22nd at sundown. So we would like for everybody to come out around 7.30. We probably get started around 8 or something like that. We know that the days are getting shorter now, right? <coughs> so that's Tuesday, September 22nd at sundown. Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles will be Sunday, September 27th at sundown. So we expect for everybody to be here for uh, at around 7.30. Uh, we'll probably get started around 8 o'clock again. And that's the first day of the Feast of uh, uh, Tabernacles, which is Sunday, September 27th at sundown. The eighth day will be Sunday, October the 4th at sundown. 
uh, Sunday, October the 4th at sundown. So we will be holding a feast here, and we will be feasting for seven days. So if you like to, you come out and join us. Okay?